All right, so boom, y'all, my pessimistic music opinions. In this video, I'm gonna be telling you guys certain viewpoints and certain opinions I have on music discussions and how fans of music act as a whole. And the reason I'm labeling these as pessimistic opinions is because I can admit that the way I perceive these things is more negative than it should be. Like after watching this video, I can completely understand why some of y'all would look at me and think I'm mean or y'all might go, bro, why are you looking at this like it's a bad thing? Because the way I'm about to describe these opinions can be looked at as unnecessarily negative. But I don't care, man. This is, <laughs> this is honestly how I feel when it comes to these particular topics. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. I'm gonna need y'all to lock in because this is about to be a long video. Let's get to the first opinion. Let me say right now when it comes to this first entry, I am not super OD when it comes to thinking like this. I don't fully believe that any single time a person says something is no skips, that is automatically meat riding. You know, I'm not one of those people that has memes saved in my phone where if I see a person say, man, this album is all hits, no misses, I'm gonna respond with a dick riding driver's license. It's not that serious. What I mostly mean when it comes to this entry is longer albums. When it comes to these rap albums that be having 18, 20, 23 or more songs, when I see people say, man, this album ain't got no skips on it, bro. It's 21 songs on here and all 23 songs go hard. When I hear people say that, instead of looking at the album and going, dang, you say all 21 songs is fire? Hmm, I may be missing out on some heat, man. Let me check the album out. I will more so look at you and think, bruh, an album that long can't possibly not have any skips. Like, you sound like you on dick right now. I'll say I have this reaction about half of the time. 50% of the time when I hear someone say an album is amazing, every single song is great, not a single skip, it makes me give that person the side eye like, eh, all right, dude, relax. And it can be albums that I haven't listened to myself. Like I kind of just said earlier, if it's an album that I haven't even heard, instead of being intrigued into checking it out, I'm gonna assume out the gate that you're hyping up the album too much if I hear you say something like, every song on here is wonderful. Now, when it comes to albums that I have heard myself that I personally think do have skips, that's really when I feel like this if I hear someone say it's a no skip album. And I have two examples. One of them is hypothetical on how I would react. Another one is a real life example of somebody fanboying that I've actually seen happen in real time. And I went, oh no, nah, you should be ashamed of yourself for hyping up this album like this. Before showing y'all what those two examples are, I want to say that calling somebody a meat writer because they like an album more than you is ridiculous. I'm not saying that if I think something is weak and you like it, that I'm about to jump on you and start calling you names. It's clearly just a difference of opinion. You know, not everybody has to like or dislike something as much as you do. But sometimes people just be over exaggerating when they praise something and it makes you look at them like, hey damn, you kind of giving this too much credit, like calm down. Here's a quick example right here. A few months ago, I was watching a video about Outkast and some dude in the comments said, Outkast has the best discography in hip hop, hands down. Now that's fine right there. The very next sentence took this from a legit comment to a meat writing comment. Every Outkast album doesn't have a skippable track. This is just straight nonsense to me. Outkast are indeed goats and have some great music, but to say, aside from Idlewild, they don't have a single skip on any of their five albums, that's out of this world meat writing to me. Now, the first album that I had this reaction with, which was a real life scenario, was Polo G's third album, Hall of Fame. This album was released at midnight on June 11, 2021. Tell me why. Within an hour after this album was released, I saw a tweet from someone that said, Hall of Fame is one of the greatest albums I've ever listened to. The versatility, the features, just everything about this album is incredible. Polo G is such a talented artist. When I tell y'all I have never seen someone glaze another person this damn fast, I saw this tweet the night the album dropped and went, there is no way in hell this is real. The number one reason why I didn't take this tweet seriously though, is because it came from a Polo G fan account. Dude got Capilot in his profile picture, he got Capilot tagged in his bio, you tagged him in this very tweet, so you really wanted him to see this. So once I peeped that this was a Polo G fan account, that's really when I went, oh, you saying that Hall of Fame is an incredible album means absolutely nothing because you're practically in love with this man. So of course you gonna say all this. Some of you may call me messed up for saying this and say, just because this is a Polo G fan account doesn't mean he's meat riding. He's probably just actually a huge fan of Polo's music. 
No, nah, bro, I'm not trying to hear that. Doing this for any artist is weird as hell. And finally, a hypothetical example that I will use is Drake's Scorpion album. 25 songs is on Scorpion. Literally everybody knows that the main issue with this project is that it's bloated and it would have been better had he scrapped several tracks. And although there are some people who think it's an overhated project, to call it a fantastic album with no skips would be top tier delusion to me. If you are a normal human being, I legit don't think it's possible for you to listen to Scorpion and go, well, hey, I enjoyed every track. I think every track on there is great. I will immediately assume that you're a Drake stan if you said something like this. And this is how I feel half the time when I see people overly praise a project. Instead of looking at the project in a positive light, I'm gonna look at you like, tone it down a little bit. You're doing the most. Now this entry applies to rappers and producers. When I say having a lot of songs in the vault is not a flex, I'm also saying having a lot of beats is not a flex. So this is what I mean. There are artists out there that have so much music, they just constantly, constantly uploading and releasing new songs that some people will look at them and say, dang, they have a very strong work ethic. They stay in the studio day in and day out. They really be in the booth grinding. I'm one of those people that thinks quality will always be more important than quantity. So when I hear a rapper or a producer say, Man, I got hundreds of songs in the vault. I can put out eight mixtapes right now if I wanted to. Bro, I got so many beats on my hard drive. I got like a thousand beats that I made that are just sitting around. I don't look at that as having a strong work ethic. I look at that as more so, oh, so you just be in the studio throwing just anything together, huh? How the hell do you have 400 songs in the vault? How? Out of that 400, I already know that most of them can't be that good if you haven't put them out and you just got them sitting around in storage. A thousand beats, bro? It gotta be a whole bunch of mid beats on that hard drive if you have that many. I have an example of artists doing this and a producer doing this that I'm about to show y'all. First, when it comes to rappers, some people where you can tell it's obvious that they're just throwing together a bunch of tracks on all of their tapes is Soulja Boy and Gucci Mane. Soulja has over 65 mixtapes and Gucci has about 80 mixtapes. I don't even have to listen to these 80 mixtapes by Guwap to know that there's a lot of lazy throwaway tracks on them. It would be impossible for anybody to have 60 to 80 tapes without having a bunch of skips in there somewhere. But an artist I really want to show is the Migos. Just wait on it! Because these fellas are the entire reason I have this opinion in the first place. Back in summer 2021 when the Migos was on The Breakfast Club after the release of Culture 3, Offset mentioned at one point, on my phone, I can literally show y'all we got like 500, 700 songs that we recorded. Then Quavo and Takeoff said that they did as well. Shit, all three of us got a storage of like 500, 700 songs, and it's all different songs amongst all three of us. With the time, though, it was hard to chew, though, because we probably got like 700 songs we recorded since we dropped. Damn. I can show it in my, my media, too. Like, it's like 600 songs, he 500, got I got one, and he got one. Yeah. Who's was all music. The first time I heard this, I was mind blown, but I wasn't mind blown in a good way. I didn't go like, damn, man, between the three of y'all, y'all recorded at least 1,500 songs? That's amazing. I went... See, this is why y'all albums be filled with a whole bunch of boring ass tracks because y'all make too much music. It literally reflects in the quality of the album. Both Culture 2 and Culture 3 are loaded with skippable tracks. You can tell that the fellas was going in the studio making songs quick as hell. And this was essentially confirmed by somebody in their camp. DJ Darrell, a longtime producer of Migos and the guy that executive produced Culture 2. In an interview, Darrell said that the Migos could knock out a song in about 20 minutes when they was recording Culture 2. And when it came to songs that they needed additional time with, at most they could make a song in 45 minutes. This is the BS that I'm talking about. When I hear this, I'm not impressed. This makes me go, see, this is why Culture 2 is so goddamn boring. Because y'all was throwing together songs in 20 minutes. Like, y'all tripping. Another quick example is DC The Don. Back in August 2023, DC The Don posted a picture of a car with a shattered window. And he said, somebody stole my laptop that had like 300 songs on it. Now, I didn't know DC The Don had haters really, but it was people replying to his tweet saying things like, God is good, let's go, this is the best news I've heard in a while, my summer has now been made, things like that. But one reply in particular, someone told DC, just let them fly bro, you know, just forget about them 300 songs. And DC replied to that person and said that those 300 songs weren't even mixed and that they all sounded like crap, so now what? Him saying, so now what? I. I don't know if he's saying that to mean, oh, I don't really care. My laptop of 300 songs got stolen, but those 300 songs were all unmixed and sounded like crap, so I don't really care. 
But my thing is, why do you even have 300 songs that you were working on? Like, that's wild to me. I completely get having a verse here, a freestyle there, this song right here may be over a new type of production that you're experimenting on. You're testing out a new flow on this one. I understand that, but 300 is a large number. Some of those songs were going to be weak as hell anyway, if you had that many sitting around. What about Chris Brown? I know Chris Brown has been in the game for almost 20 years now, but for that man to say he has nearly 15,000 unreleased songs, this is why his later albums be having 50 songs each. He got so much damn music, he just be throwing stuff on his project nowadays. The very last person I want to show y'all is the producer, Nick Mirror. Nick Mirror once tweeted that over the past few years, he's had over a couple thousand beats that he made that were sitting in his library. And he actually took the time to re-listen to most of the beats and he was only impressed by less than 20 of them. This ratio is horrible. You have a library of over 2,000 beats that you've made in the past three years and you only like 20 of them? Nick then said after this, I restarted my whole library and from now on, I'm only making beats that I love and truly feel. It's time for quality over quantity. Now, this is where the hater pessimistic side of me comes in. I could already tell that most of those beats in that library wasn't that good, even without him admitting that. No producer makes a couple of thousand fire beats in a few years and just has them sitting around. That is not possible to me. I understand that you don't want to sell a beat to just anybody. I understand saving a beat for a particular artist that you want to work with because you think they'll sound the best over it, so you want them to have it. And like I mentioned earlier with DC The Don, I understand that some beats may just be you experimenting with new sounds here and there, but not 2,000 beats, bruh. For Nick to even have that many just lets me know he was throwing together just anything and that a lot of the beats weren't anything special which he pretty much confirmed him to himself since he said he cleaned out his whole library. Like the old saying goes, if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything at all. I don't agree with this sentiment when it comes to critiquing art. This is where I disagree. Once you create something and you put it out there in the world for it to be judged by other people, a person can say anything positive or negative about that product if that's how they feel. What do they think is good or bad, great or garbage, amazing or terrible? People can say what they want. But here's the flip side to that. Some people, even if they think something is trash, they're not going to say it because they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. These are the type of people I'm coming after in this entry. I can go off on other types of people that say other nonsense too, like you should never call something bad because that's disrespectful to the creator. People put their heart, energy, money, and time into their work. So that's so mean to just say that it sucks. Like, I don't I don't like to call music trash ever or any art. I like to say it's for me or it's not for me because at the end of the day, that's all it is. It's not trash. Right. It's not for you. Right. Someone still you know so put their pain into making it. Money, exactly. All that shit. That logic is stupid as hell too. Just because a person put their time and energy into something doesn't mean everybody in the universe has to think it's good. You taking time to work on something doesn't make you immune to negative comments. People who say stuff like, if you don't like something, that's fine, but you don't have to say it's bad, are people who have very soft skin. And don't even get me started on other people who say stuff like, if you're not an artist yourself, then your opinion isn't important because you don't know how hard it is to make music. <sighs> I've already discussed that ridiculous logic too in my double standards and hip hop video. But the people I wanna talk to in this entry are the people who say things like this. I don't want to say something is bad because I don't want to offend the people that do like it. When I hear stuff like this, it irks my nerves. For the people watching this video that think like this, please let me know. Why do you think like this? You do realize that talking about a product and then talking about the people that enjoy the product are two different things, right? If you think a song or an album is bad, you have every right to say it's bad. You're not talking about the other people that do like that song or album. So why are they even on your mind? Why are they stopping you from saying what you truly feel? I don't like to call something bad because I don't want the people who do enjoy it to feel bad or to think I'm judging them. I don't like to call anything bad because just because I disliked it doesn't mean someone else out there doesn't like it. These type, I, I'm sorry, bro, I'm sorry. These type of phrases, people who say stuff like this, you are soft as hell in my opinion. I have never felt like this on my YouTube channel at all. If I say something sucks and you get offended by it, that's not my problem. 
I'm not judging you for liking it unless I explicitly say that. You know, if I say something like, oh, if you think this is fire, then you got low standards. Something like that, I'm clearly judging you for liking it. But other than that, if I simply say, man, this song is whack, and you get offended by that, then that's not my problem. I'm not about to withhold my honest opinion on the song just to make you feel better. And honestly, I think the people who do act like this are virtue signalers. If you don't know the definition, virtue signaling is when someone says or does something because they believe it will make them look like a nice person in the eyes of others. Like if I say this or if I do this, it will make me look like someone of good moral character. Just like that DC the Don clip I showed y'all. I honestly think DC is virtue signaling in that clip. I don't call anything bad. I just say it's not for me. Even if I think something is bad, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to disrespect the artist. That's so disingenuous to me. We all come across stuff that we think is bad. Like it's okay to say it, bro. I even heard Vince Staples say that one time. There's no such thing as bad music. If you don't rock with something, then just leave it at that. But to call it whack, you're shitting on the people that do like it. No, I'm not shitting on the people that do like it. That's a whole different thing. What the hell are y'all talking about? The reason why people think this way to begin with is because there are some folks out there that when they enjoy a thing, they take it very personal when they come across someone who's talking down on it. This is in regards to food, music, movies, video games, anything. If a person really loves Kanye West's Yeezus album, for example, hearing another person say, Yeezus by Kanye is so whack, bro, that's easily one of his weaker albums. It will make that person feel some type of way because you're talking trash about something that they like and they will take it personal even though you're not talking about them as a person. For a lot of people, if they like something and you call it trash, it's legit like impossible for them to separate their feelings from their actions. Instead of just going, hey, I mean, I rock with it and leaving it alone, they will like get mad at you for even saying it's trash in the first place. This is a whole nother conversation in itself that we not about to have in this video. If you get offended because somebody says that they don't like something that you do like, you just have major issues. Bone Thugs and Harmony are my favorite rappers ever. I done told y'all this a million times. If someone commented on this very video and said, Bone Thugs and Harmony is garbage, they're easily the most overrated rap group ever, I'm not about to get offended by that. <laughs> like, I don't give a damn if you think Bone Thugs is garbage. Your opinion on them has nothing to do with me. This entry is reminding me of the whole Chris Tuckman situation. For those of y'all who don't know him, Chris Tuckman is essentially the Fantano of the movie world. He's one of the most famous movie reviewers on YouTube. He's been doing this for over a decade. Some months ago, Chris came out and said he's no longer going to do negative movie reviews on his channel. Unsurprisingly, Chris has been getting flack for this. People have been calling him a pussy and saying that he's being disingenuous by suddenly going, oh, I don't wanna shit on movies anymore. Now, Chris is an indie filmmaker and he's trying to get his foot in the door more with Hollywood. So that's really what the reason is. He doesn't want to burn any bridges or any connections that he may get in the industry. But could y'all imagine if a music review YouTuber did that? Imagine if Fantano, the NFR podcast boys, uh, Spectrum Pulse, Tied in the Shadows, Imagine any of those dudes started making music themselves or started working really close with artists in the industry and out of nowhere they just went, you know what guys, I'm no longer going to do negative reviews on my channel. I'm, I'm going to stop rating stuff as not good and speaking negatively on albums. If the score isn't at least a 5 out of 10, then I'm not even going to bother making a video. Those dudes would get cooked if they sold out like that. So when you're discussing how much you like an album, especially when it comes to one of your favorite albums of all time, I get to some degree how ranking the songs, choosing what your number one favorite song, what your least favorite song, I get why that can be difficult, but it certainly isn't impossible. Have you guys ever been in or seen a conversation of someone being asked what's their favorite song from an album and they say something like, man, I don't know if I could pick a favorite song, man. All of the songs on this album hit. Asking me to pick my number one favorite is diabolical. I love all the songs on here for different reasons. Some of y'all are probably like that when it comes to discussing y'all favorite albums. Now, I can understand this to a degree when it comes to picking your favorite songs because you have different moods that you be in. You can go to each song for different reasons. I get that. But even if you can't pick one favorite, I feel like every album has a few songs that you can easily highlight over the other ones. Now, when it comes to choosing your least favorite song on an album, when I hear people say things like, man, I, I can't pick a least favorite. I love every song on here. That's when I think people are doing too much. 
if you get asked what's the worst song on a project or what song on here where even if you like the song you don't like it as much as the other ones to say i can't choose a least favorite or a worst one i like every song on the album equally as much that's some bullshit to me this is a little bit similar to what i said in the number one entry these type of responses come off as fanboying you would instantly come off as a stand of an artist to me if i asked you about a Nicki minaj project like what's your least favorite song on pink friday the first one what's your least favorite i don't have a least favorite every song on that album is amazing i, I can't choose if i ask you about the marshall matters lp what's, what songs would you say are your least favorite from that album I, I i ain't got no least favorite song man that whole album is flawless in my mind you would instantly be labeled a barb a stan or just a fanboy of whatever artist we're talking about i would be like bro you can't be serious how do you love every song <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry bro i'm sorry i just don't find it possible that a person can listen to an album and they can love every song on there equally as much. With the Eminem example, how can you listen to Under the Influence, Amityville, The Real Slim Shady, Marshall Matters, The Way I Am, and say, I like all of these songs equally as much? You know good well there's at least one or two songs that will make you go, hmm, okay, I still like this song, but I don't know if I like it as much as this one. And again, like I mentioned in the first entry, the longer the album, the more ridiculous this statement is to me. If an album has 20 songs and you can't look at that album and choose which songs that would have you like, okay, if I had to rank these, these songs would probably be towards the bottom. Then off of that alone, you're overrating the hell out of the project that you're talking about. Let me reiterate something that I said earlier in this video. I don't attack people for thinking differently than I do. Even if I think what you're saying is some BS, I'll probably just say my piece and keep it pushing. But most of the time, I just ignore what I see. Like, I don't argue with people. For previous entries in this video, if I actually saw someone on social media say a 26 song album had no skips, I'm not about to reply to them and say they're a meat writer. If I came across someone that said, I don't like to call albums bad because there's always someone out there that enjoys it. I wouldn't reply to them and go, stop being a bitch, bro. I'm not that type of person <laughs> where I try to force someone to have the same mindset as me. I bring this up because there was something I tweeted years ago and I still 100% stand by this to this day. And this is really how I feel about music discussions. And I said, I'm not really into the whole argumentative side of hip hop like a lot of y'all are. If someone disagrees with a take I have on a song, album, or artist, I just say, all right, bro, and go on with my day. I don't see how y'all be spending a half hour arguing with each other. This tweet perfectly sums up how I react when I come across people that disagree with me. Even if I express my opinion that I disagree, I'm gonna just leave it at that. I'm not about to go back and forth with you about the subject. I'm surprised that people do act like that. I still see it to this day, especially on Twitter. You can come across a thread of people replying to each other over a period of several hours of them arguing about something. And every time I see that, I just be like, dude, why do y'all even care this much to have this long of a conversation? Like y'all don't agree with each other. So just leave it alone. Another thing that I can say that perfectly sums up how I am on my YouTube channel as well. I never say anything in order to get people to agree with me. Nothing that I've ever said on my channel. I said it because I was trying to get other people's approval. People who watch my videos, y'all can disagree with something I say all y'all want to. That's not about to change my mind about how I feel just because y'all don't agree. I get comments all the time on my videos of people telling me they disagree with something I said or try to tell me I'm wrong for saying something is mid or trash. And I hardly ever respond to those people because I feel like there's no point to. Like, okay, I think this song is mediocre. You think it's great. Or I think this album is great. You think it's mid. What are we supposed to talk about here? This is the reason why I specifically use the word defend in this entry. I'm not saying that I will never explain my opinions. Y'all hear me explain my opinion in my videos all the time. I specifically mean once we establish that we don't agree with each other, I feel like there's no conversation to be had. If you listen to my explanation and you still go, well, I just don't agree with you. I'm gonna be like, okay, nigga, <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to. I'm not here to convince you of anything. Just because I say something in one of my videos or on a community post or on social media, that doesn't mean I have to get into a full blown conversation about it. Like I can explain my opinion if you ask me about it, but I don't have to. And some people will even disagree with that and say, nah, you a music YouTuber, you should be willing to defend your opinion. 
I have a perfect example to show you guys what I mean and this video will be done after I tell this story. Some time ago, I had posted pictures of each tier that I had Drake songs in from my worst best Drake songs videos. Because those videos are long gone, I had made a community post showing people which tier I had each song in. And it was this dude that started pressing me on why I had headlines in the fire tier. And they saying I'm back, I'd agree with that. I just take my time with all this shit, I still believe in that. There was some kid named Raphael that commented, how can you have in too deep, furthest thing, feel no ways, fountains and elevate in the mid tier, but you got headlines in the fire tier. This is absolute madness. This kid can't be taken seriously. Uh, first things first, not a single song that he named was in the mid tier. So I'm gonna tell y'all now this dude wasn't even paying attention to the thing that he was commenting about. None of those songs was in the mid tier anyway. It's always people with no profile picture that be saying the darnest things. But this type of comment off rip is ridiculous to me. He's acting like <laughs> we're talking about Ratchet Happy Birthday. You really got headlines in the fire tier? This is absolute madness. I can't take you serious. Like, boy, what? But I didn't say anything to this. So a couple of minutes later, this dude responded to me under somebody else's comment and said the same thing. You got some explaining to do. There is no world where headlines is better than fountains, feel no ways, etc. So at this point, this is the second time that Donatello has complained about the tier that I put headlines in. So in my mind, I'm like, I don't have to explain anything. And so at first, as y'all see, I just sent him some question marks and was like, uh, all right. This dude's next response was, you copping out? Pretty much like, oh, yo, you afraid to answer? Saying I'm a cop out for not answering his question. So I simply said, if you don't think headlines is fire, then that's okay. But you've already left two comments saying, ain't no way you got headlines over one, two, three, and four. Like, why are you whining so much about this? People like this Michelangelo kid blow my mind. There is a massive difference between simply sharing with someone your different viewpoint versus just flat out bitching that someone doesn't have the same opinion as you. And this guy was definitely doing the latter. This was his response after I asked him why was he whining so much. I'm not about to read the whole thing, but his excuse was, I'm really passionate about music and Drake is my favorite artist, so I really want to know. The line that caught my attention and the entire reason I have this entry in this video is when he said, you have an opinion that you share with us. You should defend your position. This right here is what I massively disagree with. Just because I made a community post showing what I think Drake's best songs are, doesn't mean I have to sit here and explain to you why I have certain songs on that list. And also, you didn't even ask me like a normal person. You were legit whining about it. This is absolute madness. I can't take you serious. You got some explaining to do. Like, why the hell do people act like this? You've made it very clear that you don't think Headlines is a fire song. So for you to ask me to explain why I think it's fire is a pointless conversation from the jump. I like the song and you don't, bro. Just leave it at that. To make this entire situation worse though, Leonardo was talking to somebody else and he even said that he used to think Headlines was a fire song. Leo told the other person, Headlines was fire in 2012, I used to play it all the time. That record is trash now and it's not getting played over any of these other records. So you used to like the song a lot, but now 12 years later you're bugging YouTubers for why they like the song? I was like, bro, there is no way this kid is serious. The other person responded and told him, I think Headlines is well constructed, it's catchy, and it shows Drake back when he was hungry. It's an all around enjoyable song. And the next line from Master Splinter made me shake my head to the strongest degree possible. This nigga told him, I agree with everything that you said. This man said, Headlines is trash. Someone else said, I think it's an enjoyable song all around. And this fool said, I agree. People like this are exactly why I don't bother responding to people who disagree with me. And especially why I don't bother responding to people that talk like, man, you don't know what you talking about, bro. You tripping. If you're this type of individual that likes to press people that have a different opinion than you, then you might as well never comment on my channel because I'm not even going to entertain it. Outro, outro.